Harper, here. Melanie, here. Betty, here. Good to see Betty. Teresa. Laura, Angela, and me. And Eric. And Eric. And Eric. Laura. I don't think we put Eric on the. No, we didn't. Oh. There you go on yours, it is. Oh. Laurel Alterman is excused. She is. Family Bachelor is excused. Uh, yes. Stephanie is absent. Danielle will be coming late. And Laura Rutledge. Uh, Laura Rutledge is no longer on the show. Oh. Okay, great. Thank you. Perfect. And Iris may be joining us online, but has not as of yet. Yeah. But if she is not, she is excused. Yeah. Okay, so public invite to be heard. No. No. Corrections to the July 20 minutes. Okay. Anybody? Anybody read up? See any corrections? I read them. <laughs> they look excellent. I read them. Yes. I only wanted one essay. Not bad, huh? So I need a motion to approve. As amended. Yes, so. I move to approve the next. And second. Second. And all in favor? Additions, corrections to the agenda? Okay. Ooh. Council comment, Sean, is not here yet today. Project update, Butterfly Pavilion in Flanders Park. You have successfully installed and dedicated your Butterfly Pavilion in Flanders Park. And it's gorgeous. It is, it is it really gorgeous. gorgeous. It is really pretty. Well, Not I everyone so. thinks so, but that's okay. <laughs> that's what the resource is. And I have a gazing bomb. Thank you. Absolutely love the gazing bomb. Yes, I do too. So, I think it's really nice. Your press was very good. You should have seen it in the leader, the touch call, the camera, reporter Harold. So, really good um, exposure, I'd say. Um, we counted the participants. This was very early on in the dedication, and I, I counted 89 more than this. So I'm going to say 90. Uh, some people did leave when Mother Nature decided to show up and join the party. Uh, I think it was like right when the mayor started talking and started pour, yeah. and then right when it was done, they decided to stop. So, but about but about twenty minutes before we had that, the it got cloudy and the beautiful breeze came through and it was just wonderful. It was perfect. Uh, this was the dedication that Mayor Peck read. So, on behalf of the City of Longmont Art and Public Places, we dedicate this artwork to the past, present, and future residents of Longmont and our sister cities. See about who's on next up. We had a space we got space of gathering, beautiful peace, joy, and enlightenment. May it stand to celebrate many years of successful student exchange, cultural understanding, and as envisioned by President Dwight D. Eisenhower, the power of people to people citizen diplomacy, which is what the Sister Cities original conception was all about. So that's a that's an odd angle of that photograph because it makes the the pavilion look tiny next to the tall women over there, but it's actually pretty tall. It's actually nice. I think I have yeah, that was a good point. Oh, and I've cropped it here. But anyway, um, so on the right is Courtney Michelle, who's the vice chair of Sister Cities. Um, and the blue dress is Jody Bliss, the artist. Um, in the middle is the uh, diplomat who came from Ciudad Guzman, who I do not know her name. No, the, the white and red. White and red. No, that's not. The white and red is the land, the translator. Yes, because she came from Ciudad Guzman on behalf because their mayor was yeah. unable to yeah. defend. But that other one with the tacos is the one with. Yeah, the other one, yeah. all in red, who was in that picture. Who was, who was, who was not in this picture? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Oh, you're right. I said it correctly. Yes. That is Anna, but also from Ciudad Guzman, but she's not. Yeah. 
That is fair. That is fair. Uh, obviously, Mayor Peck, our own Susan Horowitz, who acted on the behalf of our public assistance vote. And then on the left is um, Janice Raven, who is the chair of the Sisters. Um, I thought it was a good turnout. That we had lots of kids, lots of people from Mexico, lots of uh, community members. It was nice. It was very nice. Yeah. So those is the present student exchange, and that you're correct is the, in the, in the yeah in the red there. That's so. right. Okay. Uh, city council presents. We had Councilman um, McCoy, of course, came. We had Mayor Peck. Susie Hidalgo Farring, who is the liaison for the Museum Advisory Board, and Shakita Yarborough showed up. So four of our city council folks showed up, which I think speaks to the power of the program. And then that is the storm was it passed after it was done. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Was fine. So yeah, this picture with the with the kids is better for the size of the and you know, the thing is that we saw the pictures and we saw her idea concept and we looked at her concept drawings for the colors and everything. But when you actually see it in person, there's so many little tiny details that you just didn't get from all the drawings. Like the back of all the seats are like, it's like twisted aluminum or steel and painted. It's, it's, all, it's really, really well laid. So um, some of there was, of course, learning throughout this process, uh, which we're taking along with us. Uh, the signs that were at the site were very successful for disseminating the message that a public art process was coming, program was coming, that the artwork was coming. Uh, clearly worked far better than even the door hangers on the individual residences, and as well as the postcards. So good things to know. Um, especially as we go into other projects and you know learning curves are learning curves um, Eric and I did meet with a number of the residents in the neighborhood to hear their feelings uh, which are big feelings about the piece and um, yeah we're excited to move forward and uh, all of the feedback during the installation all of the feedback uh, that we received during the dedication was all positive yeah. so I mean and the stamps we bought to put in the sidewalk were great. Yes, they look really good. You can, there's no question these are butterflies. Yep. And Mario Echevarria, who did not receive the commission, has gone by multiple times and it is very complimentary and says it fits really well and it is what the scope of work said. And uh, that was pretty big ahead too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, he's he's a resident, right? He's a resident. So. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Hey. hey. So I need a motion. Hello, Danielle. I'm checking you here. Um, I need a motion to accept the project as installed. Anybody? I need the motion to accept the project. Lisa, anybody second? Okay. Who seconded? Melody. All in favor? <coughs> so there's no taking that out, guys. <laughs> That's done. And we'll make sure that the artist gets paid and send an email. Yes. Just it's so it really sucks to me that you know we go through all this process and we have all these meetings and all those input we take into little detail but we really could not have done better um, and i feel the same way about the spoke project it had so many parts wasn't going to work but i don't think we could have done better i love it and um, i love this piece too and i know we went through a bunch of stuff but the bottom line is that the results count the results don't work congratulations yeah. yeah this it, it certainly was a long time coming you know, COVID can just take a walk in my book, but uh, the fact that, you know, projects like this can, can persevere and that we were able to make it uh, for the student exchange and click all of the boxes of Sister City 2 was a testament. So, yeah, there's a lot of positive things. Courtney Michelle got through your poem. She, mm -hmm. she, it was all good. It was all, it was an excellent time. Good. All 
All right, well, are you ready to do some more stuff? Yes. Okay, well, let's get to it. Shock our cup thing. So, we have confirmed from the artists that were winners that they will move forward. We're waiting on contracts right now from legal. Um, so I'm going to send those out as soon as we get those back. And then training is going to happen at the end of the month. Um, and then I also did a little bit of work uh, looking into the voting demographics. If you open up your blue folder, behind the agenda is just a little breakdown of some of the numbers from our voters that we could collect. Um, just because we're kind of considering, no, no one has made a decision right now, but it's just information to put out there. But like, we had a very robust in person voting this year. And, and last year. And last so, year. Yeah, yeah that was about the same. Um, but the demographics of in, in, in person and online versus in person or local to Boulder County local to Colorado and then out of state and like the breakdown of the people that are actually voting on the boxes. So just something to think about for next year when we do this project once again and how we're going to handle voting in the future. Um, by my tally, total votes approximately, just approximately between in-person and online came to about 1,230. And then I deduped, and then I went back and verified. And no, that was that was after the oh, deduping. after the deduping. Yeah. Okay. And I think some of the kid votes didn't have zip codes, so I didn't really have yeah. that information to like. But you, I mean, but this was when we were telling. This was yeah. approximately what we got. That's one hundred and thirty. So not bad down for to a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, eleven weeks. So it's not that close. Yeah. But it does beg the question, when you start looking at this information, which is these online out-of-state votes, which is going down, um, that's enough votes in one person's favor to, to sway a decision. And if those people aren't here, uh, number one, and they're not seeing them in person, it does beg the question of like social media influence and the validity of, you know, how connected are you with the community at much? Sure. I question that myself. The, the online of state? Mm -hmm. the I can't tell you how many people I had to say, no, you can vote. Uh, Just family visiting. Mm -hmm. Family visiting. Does it have like Yeah, in person. Yeah. VPN. Oh, can you tell if you, like, you know, maybe you have a VPN or something and it says you're on a state property? Probably just gathered by zip code. Yeah. yeah, and we did get, I mean, we got IP addresses. I mean, there's, you know, in this day and age, you can take it to the nth degree, right? <laughs> um, but, so I just think um, what Laura and I have been speaking about is that engagement piece and vested interest really in the program, not so much into an individual artist. And then, of course, there's the piece of online voting was born out of COVID. Is, yeah. is, it, rel is it relevant? Is the engagement and the outreach through online voting of shop art, is it necessary? Is it not? Have we talked to the community far enough that people don't put their way down to do you know, in person? But the, it's the online out of state people, like, for me. But like Laura said, we don't have to make any decisions today. We get to live with this um, data for a little bit, but certainly the task force for next year, this is going to be a topic. I, I want to throw this out that I haven't been thinking about this in the last week or so. And it seems to me that it's beneficial to long to encourage everybody to come down downtown and go in person and Next year, when Instagram and everything is up and running, we'll be able to constantly pump the, oh, come and do the shock thing. And people might be motivated. 
integrated and every ins and outs. Oh, well, in our, I mean, and the statistics show that, I mean, it's, it's, it's going back up. Our yeah. in-person is, yeah. is increasing. Mm -hmm. And our local online votes are going down. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, this is just something we can think about again in the spring, when we, in the winter, when we start over again. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, is it, does it cost us more to run online voting, or does that like does that affect us in any certain aspect versus just doing in person voting? Staff time. Yeah, and we're also we didn't have any control of the voting. Yeah, it's comms team that makes it, and then it also was delayed this year because they couldn't get there. Okay. What do you say? What do you say? Moving a group, moving a group. <laughs> cool. Just I was just curious. Yeah, I was like, I figured there was something more, a little bit more yeah. that I was missing to this aspect, and that's why I was. Yes, just, yes, yeah, time was part. So we also have to count and, like, yeah, go through all the. That backside, for sure. Nobody looks at that backside. The de duping yeah. is so yeah. not fun. It is not fun to see when people are being gross. Yeah. And like making up email addresses and only voting for one box, and it's kind of selfless. It's, but at the same time, we do think that um, our team has been reusing a, uh, a format and then it broke. So for a certain amount of time, we're like, voting is up because we had this window of time yeah. and it was broken. Or was it working on some browsers or and some then on other browsers? It was fine and it just looked. Okay. Yeah, like the optics of it was gross. So, like, so we learned our lessons. We need to start with a fresh template every time. The photos came out better this year, but the other thing that we discussed was some of the photos of some of the boxes that were not executed very well looked much better in the photograph than in person. Oh, that's an interesting thought. I can totally. That's usually I feel like the opposite. Usually, pictures and this thing is like first, but <laughs> so like the quality of the artist's hand is certainly lost in that translation. I like that. photography. Yeah. So we contacted the artist to tell us they want. Yeah. Yeah. yeah artists know now. We uh, published online on Facebook that of the winners. Um. Yeah. We just are waiting for people to get back to us so that we can ask for contacts. So has everybody seen? Oh, oh there's I'm yeah. sorry. No. That wasn't nice. I'm sorry. It was on Facebook. It's in the current projects. It's shocker. Social media probably. Okay, so there's a part of me that feels like if the newspapers and the, you know, everything promotes like you can either vote in person or online, it gets more, it becomes more inclusive. But obviously, there's some problems with it too. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's more inclusive, but if everybody that votes on one, half of the people voting online are cheating. That's right. No, it's not correct. Right. It's not great. It's so, going down. so these are the winners. And the reason you're doing six this year <laughs> is you have one artist from last year that was unable to execute their contract in a sufficient amount of time. So she will be doing her piece from last year. We have one that the Geely Wolf piece on 66 in Hover that has been tagged by Black Rustle Liam. So I've met with your contractor who is actually going to, um, to the test remove the graffiti large into, and it's taking off the mural as well. So we're gonna do spot patches there, so that's no big deal. And then of course you have the mushrooms, which the sealant needs to be taken off, and then the mural needs to actually be finished, and then we'll seal it. So we're working with nine artists. Is she, gonna, is she gonna have to redo the whole mushroom work? I'm not sure yet. Okay. It depends on how well the sealant comes off with the sealant remover, and sealant is not made to removed yeah so there you go we'll find out we're working with a new contractor this year i'm excited about that but we'll see um the dollars are still outstanding but it's nothing that you have to worry about because yeah. that's all in the same yeah. realm um but but
that 10 artists total, working with 10 artists at any given time, that is, that is the ultimate, that is most about. <laughs> so this year it's nine, and the next year when we get back up and going and get to start fresh again, we'll consider what that looks like. But which session one from last year did not get completed? Do you remember? Yeah, the holes. It was the mountain, there's a moon and then there's the sun, and then it's like the stars. Okay, so it's a landscape. Where does that look? Sorry, because I know where it should go. It goes in a, a park down south. Because uh, just for a wrench, that would look great next to the Taco Bell one. She's already contractually um, obligated to her. I know. That's uh, I think it's in Z. Is a actually. space but mm -hmm. just with so much foot traffic and people in the community and the library there's a lot of kids yeah it would it could be tight but if, if that was an option or maybe for like one week or something is at the library or a totally. place like that yeah we can absolutely ask the, the world is our oyster for next year uh, I think we probably would keep it in Old Town Marketplace and do it in the library we've uh, in the past before my time no actually one here um it was uh here as well so okay. we yeah. could travel travel them around uh, we want to make sure that the communication was very clear from the very beginning like this week it's going to be here this week it's going to be here mm -hmm. and this week it's going to be there but moving them isn't that hard um, it is nice that Old Town Marketplace has gained some traction the last couple of years, yeah. and there's some cool stuff that's finally popping up in there. Because like the first year of AIPP, I was like, ugh, like what is this place? And then like, <laughs> was but like now it was just like, like there was only pinatas in there, and everything else was closed. And I was like, this is odd. Yeah. And then now I feel like finally, like the last few years, they've developed some nice things in there. But I've always thought the exact same thing. But I just like it's been nice that. They're starting to feel a little traction there. We'll see what next year comes, but yeah. I don't know. Well, and we'll get it started earlier this year, earlier next year as well. Um, the painting, though, has to happen in the fall. It just is not conducive to Colorado spring weather. You get a good summer, then it's summer's too hot. Yes, the yeah. adhesion of the paint doesn't work. Um, so that's the location was not going to turn and then I can show you a picture of the box if you guys need to go right now. Um, no, not that one. It's not that one? Is it not? No. Oh, do I get them confused? Howes and Holtz? Oh, yeah, no, no. It is that one. It's yeah, that one's already by the. No, that was my house from It is Holtz. Me too. Yeah. So, yeah. is this the mountains in the middle? It's that. that what about yeah. the big one in the middle? The big one did, it's installed. Yeah. Yeah, it's on over. It's on over and left hand. No, it's sunset left hand. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see it every day on my way to work. So this woman has an art therapy company. And so that's one of the things we got hung up on was my ability if she was gonna have other people who weren't trained for LPC. Yeah. But I, as I understand, she will be painting it herself. That's what she Okay. There you go. Shop art questions. It's very interesting that these the Colorado seeds are so popular. But one of the one of the strange things I really think about our shopper program is that we have everything. Everything. We have everything. I mean, I've heard that there's some cities where like, the boxes are painted, but they're all like music themes, so or they're all like local history or whatever, but ours are like everything. Which I love. Everybody votes for and loves the landscapes. They all love to see around town, but everybody has a favorite one that is not a landscape. 
Yeah. Yeah. She asks, what's so your favorite? Like, oh, it's the mouse and the cheese, or oh, it's the butterfly wings, or oh, it's the it's, it's chicken house awesome. landscape. But everybody votes for all the landscapes because they're so pretty. Yeah, I know. It's quite the psychology of the chocolate is really cool. <laughs> And this year was dinosaurs. This like, year was what is up with that? Like, all of a sudden, <laughs> like, dinosaurs and mermaids. I know. Be so so fish. Jellyfish. <laughs> yes. Now I get it. Uh, collective consciousness, I guess. Uh, to hear me from the winners is like, where their inspiration came from. Well, uh, yes, it's a question. It's a good question. So that, that is in social media. Ooh, that is a secret Instagram. Instagram. Where they're painting. You can go around to everyone. Oh, the plan. Don't you worry. I have to do this. Okay. You uh, said, uh, ask artists their, ask artists their inspiration. Um, I, I would love to know where Travis, he's the one who comes out of the bar so many times but works with him. He's the one who did the love piece and then did the sandwich this year. He always does something so different than everybody else. I love that. I love him a lot. I love that. 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 Brilliant. Okay. Great. <laughs> Moving right along. So, uh, Unity, oh. GWS, which is, which is growing Smart. water. Smart. Growing Water Smart. So, Growing Water Smart project at um, Kensington Park on whatever day that was, Saturday the 29th, was successful. Uh, there were about 50 people who came out, and uh, it was interesting talking with um, Community Neighborhood Resources about the food truck and how they got the food truck to come and say they like paid a thousand dollars, purchased a hundred dinners and um, hope for the best. And that's the way they, they did it. Everybody got two tacos and a drink. I had two four chocolates, they were delicious. <coughs> and um, yeah, people were driving by and stopping. Next Light was there um, with their big van, giving out flyers and sunglasses and stuff like that. So um, at the end of the day, uh, their uh, dot matrix approach was so so not what I was expecting at all. I thought they were going, the way that it had, they had made it sound was like they were going to actually have like a landscape architecture kind of design of like what plans they were talking about and like that. Um, and no one from the tenant gardens was there, which was a little disappointing. Um, but you must just say, as I understand, um, native plants and select just gets kind of hard to do and get acquired um, in the fall and so that's why they weren't super specific is because it's kind of dependent upon plant availability yeah. but I did find out that a lot of these native plants um, fall is a great time to plant them because it gives them an excellent opportunity to root so if you're a gardener there you go um, Mario was there that's him in the bottom left in the blue he stayed the entire time, talked with every single neighbor who came, and one woman, well, more than one person, stopped to freak out and say, you're not removing that school shirt, are you? So that was my job as, like, director of reassurance. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, and then he, he got to say, no, that's my school shirt, and this is why we're doing it. And so it really did come full circle. Uh, the most interesting thing that happened was a woman did stop, she was hesitant, and she was worried that something was going to happen to it, and she said that she was a participant when she was nine. And she and Mario went through his like bound book, and there was a picture of her and her brother. So that was super cool. Um, all of this to say that this program, I think, is an excellent uh, example of multiple departments in the city working together for a really great cause, for a common good, for education that we've been talking about, the outreach piece of it. And I won't be surprised if after this project happens and they you know, start looking at the, the next turf reclamation project, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be focused around our public places, but I imagine a project is, the desire for a project is gonna come forward. So as you consider where you want to put those dollars, the other piece of it too is uh, there's $25,000 state funds that is coming from this, and uh, you know, we would be able to match, or we would be able to, uh, in some way, shape, or form, contribute. So 
just as time goes on, um, just remember this one for uh, for the future. And no show looks like they uh, chose grass alternatives. I think grass alternatives is the is the winner. Yeah. Oh, um, the other piece is that not only did they do the in person aspect of this, they also did. Uh, postcards to the community with a QR code to send people online to vote. So they too are trying to get a grasp of the community from a wide spot. And uh, the other piece through that that postcard is to let the people know when the planning is going to be, which is on your um, agenda on the back is that September the 23rd. So, uh, yeah, I, I imagine that grass alternatives is probably where we're going. Okay, Kathy, Sweet. thank you very much. All right. Play by play maintenance, tightly. So, I have spoken to uh, artist um, JC Milner about the project. I have reached out to the manufacturer because I do believe this one is still under warranty. Um, and Laura and I did a uh, audit of how much touch of paint we have left. Contractually, the artist uh, can be paid $40 an hour. I let her know if that she was agreeable, and she said, yep, I think it'll be about 15 hours, 600 bucks. Um, that said, chances are we're going to have to order more paint. So I'm making a recommendation of at least allocating $800 in this year's budget. Uh, the other thing that's a little bit of a bummer, but I actually think it's probably okay because we're doing touch up, is the artist is only going to be available to work on a Thursday and a Friday, not on a weekend. I mean, it was a community paint to begin with, but this is going to be detailed work that we need to stay in the line. So yeah. probably less volunteers, a little more time. Um, other than that, I could look at other weekends that she may be available, but we don't want it to be too hot and Farmer's Almanac says it's going to be a nasty winter. We're probably already stretching it into the beginning of October. But those are the dates that she's committed to. Uh, if you are agreeable and allocate those dollars, I'll get her under an amendment to her contract pronto. Did you look, did you guys go around the sidewalk and look at the ones that were uh, sealed? I'm sure they're not going to look at much better. So the same contractor who I am working with for your, the shop art boxes is going to recommend the sealant. In addition, um, I mean, there's always the option, and I hate saying this, it makes me want to say but like, we could remove it and put down some sort of epoxy primer underneath it and then paint it and then seal it or we can fix it as best we can and then we seal it and just you know it's probably gonna have to be repaired you know once every five to seven years that's what we were expecting we yeah. weren't expecting one year but that's why we were testing it and as you do think that it was water it looks like used to me It felt that we had to wettest year that we've had in Colorado. I know. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like the combination of the two is what my guess would be, like the clay and the yeah. and the intense moisture this year. Yeah. Right. I need to a motion to allocate we're thinking eight hundred dollars for maintenance of this site. At least eight. Well, our gallons of paint are fifty dollars and twenty six cents. Do you think we need more? Yeah, that's, that's true. Really, I'll make a motion to put in a thousand dollars to get this dollars. project fixed and okay. everything going. So to get fixed, <laughs> make a motion to uh, that's right. A thousand dollars. Make a motion for a thousand dollar fix to um, get this project back maintenance on. Maintenance for maintenance of for maintenance project. of this project. Okay. Second, that's okay. Kylie project. All in favor? Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Get that going. 
uh, and then on the back where of your agenda, uh, a state still holds the state today. These are these. It will be an all day thing. Okay. And we probably won't be painting, but we'll be we'll be painting. So what we won't do is put a giant call out to the community. We're going to have to be pretty targeted, I think. Um, we have some great volunteers who expressed sincere interest in more things and we're very dedicated to being out of nine and outline. And then of course I have all the volunteer lists from my right when we did this the first time. Unfortunately it's just one of those situations where we can't just have moms with kids going rogue with brushes. Yeah. We, just, yeah. we need to stay in the lines this time around. Yeah. That's okay. a good job for a roller brush. Yeah. And not a hundred degree weather. Yeah. That is correct. Okay. All right. Okay, so that brings us to story tour update, Laura. Laura, is it Laura or Laura? Okay, <laughs> you can't be Laura. Okay, so all right. Yeah. Um, be wrong again. So I was tasked with taking over the tour from Miley's uh, time here, and I have everything uploaded to the website. And I recorded my voice of the text. Should we listen to it? No, <laughs> yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. <laughs> um, it's in the back of the folder that I gave you. It's like a how to access the actual thing because it's locked right now. Uh, but yeah, I have literally read this so many times, and then also listening to my voice is like makes me want to just like pull my ears off. So I would appreciate it if. Um, when you all have time, just go through it, review it. You know, we basically, I think it's pretty much done. I just, again, I cannot look for the lessons of lessons we receive as people. Oh! This is also me sitting in my closet. I love it. It sounds good. <laughs> this artwork is donated in memory of Nancy Louise Nixon. A cherished teacher and member of the community. It sounds so good. It's so good. No, it so sounds so good. good. It sounds really good. I love it. It does. Good job, Laura. So Lana. we just need to read through and make sure you didn't miss any words. Yes. It's <laughs> not like pain. Or, or, or paused for too long. Like I will like definitely pause for too long. <laughs> I think while we're, where we are in this, in this project with these two initial, you know, launches is we're at feedback stage. This is not forward facing as of right now. And we also need to send it to translation and get the, the Spanish uh, piece done. So visit it, spend time with it, uh, go, you know, stand in front of the piece with it, want to choose one, um, and then listen to it when you're not in front of the piece. Like, is the content right? Are we, what are we missing? Because we can always make changes, but the goal was to get this completed up and running for fall. So, at, in stage one, like this content, we're done with this content. But we can also make changes. So, okay. um, and both yeah. of these, like actual, I had, I did them because I went around and I took photos of everything. Very easy to do. I think I'd say like the downtown one is maybe a little like far because you have to go from the Civic Center to brick sculpture. But honestly, like, I don't know, it's just, it's a nice walk, especially if it's nice it's outside. It's two blocks, four blocks, you know, so it's not bad. Yeah. I guess the other one that was like, make the Argos, Los Argos, is like, you know, in six different places. So you can yeah. kind of choose, and I went to the one that has the other sculpture, which is quite two different Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little tour. And then, uh, but yeah, it just, I need somebody else to look at it because I'm tired of working. <laughs> Will do. Thanks for doing yeah. that. Yeah. Thank Work. you, Laura, for doing Lara for doing that. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get it. Okay. New business. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Will? Okay. All right, folks. So as you know, the executive team gets together every fall. We had not gotten together in the spring, and our goal was to do quarterly. I'm going to admit, we just haven't been great about it, but that's okay. Uh, we reviewed, of course, all of the finances, where we are, and um, as you'll recall, of course, we had a backlog of the 
projects that we were trying to get going over COVID, and then they finally started hitting all at one time. Got those off the plate, re looked at the queue of projects, and the executive team has narrowed it down. Um, so we'll start with the first one, and probably the most important one is the Pratt Bridge. So, Pratt Bridge, of course, um, is nearly as far as I can tell. Uh, $30 million project. So our uh, resilient St. Brain has contributed uh, significant funds to our couple places. That said, some of those dollars aren't always from the city budget. There's um, state and other dollars related to that. Doesn't really matter. Resilient St. Brain has went quite a bit. So um, I'm going to go a little back and forth, but this is the Pratt Bridge. Um, it is done. And these bridges, so it's going to be the one on Pratt. Um, South Pratt, so just very close to here, kind of near bootstraps. I already know where we're, where we're talking about. Um, it's the red circle, so the big two. Um, you've got, you know, Kent Pratt, and then that's Maine. So the South Pratt, and then just straight up. And of course, it crosses the river going north south. And then Boston, which is going to be its sister bridge, exactly the same design. Uh, you know, it's the, it's the east-west version. That bridge is funded, um, is bid out, is uh, construction is starting presently, and it won't be done until the end of 2025. So, of course, um, the bike route, which is going to make lots of people very grumpy, uh, is going to be closed, of course, from from Boston and then up through Heights of Wall, which of course is the top left corner. So that's where our Gathered Young People project is ha happening as well. So it's a good time to be in the Pratt Bridge and turn something into something lovely so our residents are seeing that action is happening because they're going to be grumpy about the, the closure. Um, square footage of this project is approximately 970 square feet. So um, this area here, all along and down, and this is about 99 feet from side to side, and then this is about four and a half. So it's about 970 square feet. Is that, um, is that both sides? Full sides, yes. That's 970 square feet plus 970 square feet? Mm -hmm. No, so it's 400 and something. 420 plus. digital. Okay, 420. Um, Yes, so that's true, addressing both sides. So I did research into um, a number of things. First, of course, the machinery that it's going to take to get down at the location site to get somebody up, right, um, to work on it. And then we wanted, the executive team talked about, of course, complementary to the team. Sorry, yeah. So we're talking about this area. Right. Um, our friends in engineering, um, you know, they said, you could do something here. I'm sorry, that gets tagged so hard. Mm -hmm. And so does the, um, this area down near the river. And when the river does swell, because it's going to, you know, then that ends up being underwater. Yeah. So uh, it's a suggestion of engineering and everyone. Um, that this is probably the best zone. These caps are a done deal. We're not going to remove them or anything like that. But so something that would like complement Main Street Bridge, probably colorful. The bridge is so stout, it can hold anything. It can hold a ton of weight. So I started doing research into and the we've yeah, been talking about it, commemorating this flood. Yes. It's been 10 years, even though this won't be done this year probably. Oh, it won't be done this year, but we could start the call yeah. saying in commemoration yeah. of the 10 year anniversary yeah. of the flood. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we should, and yeah, we should. Uh, mosaic. So, your piece that is on Main Street is recycled, upcycled glass. Um, this bridge could absolutely 100% hold a giant mosaic. The cost of mosaic work in the public art realm at this point in time is somewhere between $450 and $550 per square foot. And I wish I were joking, <laughs> but I'm not. 
Um, you know, it's laborious. Yeah. I get it. Um, that typically is when an artist applies mosaic to a mesh and then installs the mesh. But what we could do, and what the executive team spoke about, and could fill in here anytime, um, is mixed media. Um, not just a mural, but a mural and. A mural and. Um, if we did, if we did uh, eighty dollars a square foot, which in essence is like one fifth mosaic, right, to mural at a suggested price of a seventy-five thousand dollar project, it's like eighty dollars a square foot. That's what I'm suggesting. It's uh, there are ample dollars in the art and public places fund. Uh, this project, you know. See fit for it to be more or less. Uh, I'm all ears. If you would like more research done into it, absolutely. Um, I am 100% prepared to launch and start this scope of work, get our selection panel here figured out, our task force here, start recruiting selection panelists, and try to get an artist encumbered and you know, under contract this year. So think about that. For the, oh, go ahead. Would it be one artist doing mosaic and the painting? Correct. Yeah. The other thing to note is Boston Bridge is the sister project, and so depending upon this, we could, if we narrow it down to a number of artists, we can always, in come 2025, uh, consider you know duplicating and doing, if we find more than one um, project that we like, we wouldn't want to get that artist under contract. We want them, but yeah, we can always revisit it at that time. So there's a. So, anybody else have questions on this one, or should I just keep going? Just a brief comment. Yeah. You, have, you have a mixed media mosaic and other stuff in the one called Along the River in Rogers Grove. Yes. And so if you, if anybody wanted to look at that and get an idea, that's, I know it's just small on the side of the building, but it would give an idea. I like that. I like it too. Thank you. Much else. Yeah. So do we, we want to do we want to vote on Hermie? Well, so why don't you let me show you the other two things okay. that we were talking about first? Oh, just a, yeah. uh, oh, and I should say, when encumbering dollars, if you if you vote on the project of the dollars, um, if we need to allocate or or uh, appropriate more dollars in this year's budget because we get an artist and we want to go under contract. That's not a problem. We can always do it. Um, it's like if we do make a motion, we just don't. What we don't want to do is say to put it this year. Like we just don't, we call the dollars, and if it falls to this year or next year, so that makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. So that's preparation. There we go. So um, the parks department is doing what's called the. I don't know if anybody has heard about this, but um, they are really spearheading a, a large number of projects in a short period of time. Um, I have been invited to finally the design um, meetings that are that happen on the regular for these two parks. They're both neighborhood parks, um, Clover Meadows and Fox Meadows. Apparently, we name all our parks after meadows. So. Yeah. Uh, and so um, I do not know anything more about this project except the location. And I was told that both of the parks, including um, they're putting an astroturf in another place, was 4.5 million. But um, that's neither here nor there. So here is the location of Clover Meadows Park. This is airport. Um, this is Heather Hill, I guess, which is going to be going through, and then um, that's like a Renaissance and Pike Road. Is that, does everybody know kind of where you are? 76, 70 minutes here. So we're way west. And south. Okay, okay. Does that make sense? Do you want me to pull it up on Google Maps? Well, it's six. Where the Pike? Or maybe that's not called Pike. Well, Pike. Well, there's Bloomer Basin. Right. That's like all the way at the top. All the way at the top. Oh, oh, okay. And then this is the airport. airport. So, like, it's mm -hmm. pretty far west. Yeah. Way far west, yeah. right? Yeah. 
That's so good. the hygiene. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and it's clover like, basin comes down here. Yeah. So that's clover basin. I think like down here would be 119. Yeah. So it goes right to my Yeah. yeah. It goes between, uh, you know, diagonal. Yeah. And high yeah. Does everybody have a good sense of like where we are? Yeah. Well, if not, I can pull it up on Google Watch. It's not there. Um, so this this is the approved uh, de design at this point in time. Restrooms, a Zarek garden, major themed playground, open space with flexible use lawn. So a lot of natural uh, outdoor fitness stations, a concrete trail, hammock and slack line, a bridge with a ditch and boulder play. Um, so there's some water, soft surface trails. I can't read that. Something the track, bike skills and pump track, and then more natural open space. So um, the Parks Department is working with an outside contractor on all of these. Um, again, I don't know much more than uh, the Parks Master Plan, of course, always has neighborhood parks having something as an identifier, an identity issue issue artwork uh, for the community so we'll just be like wrapped all up into that um, and it'll start pretty much right away so uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm slightly unclear that's right they want an art project there yes and they don't care what it is I don't know I've never been to a meeting I go on Tuesday okay so these projects are on their way which Bridge, ditch, boulder, play. Yeah, oh, I mean, that must be that right uh, there. Is number eight, which is right by that brown line, go to the northeast. Oh, it's in the middle. It's, yeah, it is. It's near right, right here. The, yeah, the elbow. Yeah, yeah. And for which meeting do you go to? The, the department meeting or the the board of the uh, parks? I'm going to project manager's meeting. Oh. Yeah. There's like eight different, there's a single project manager for this project, Steve Ransweiler. And then there is uh, other park staff, and then there's the contract, the outside contractor. So uh, they've done a number of community meetings. Um, the community neighborhood resources folks are involved in all community projects going forward as it should be. Uh, project management in, in the city, um, they're taking a very new approach, a very holistic approach. It's time consuming, but it's completely worth it. So I think they're roping us in maybe a little late, but uh, early enough to give us an opportunity to hear the community, what it is, how, how they would like to identify themselves and see themselves. Um, so I'm going to this meeting, like I said, on Tuesday. Uh, but again, it was a four point, I think a four point five million dollar uh, project. There's always bike racks, right? Every park wants bike racks. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so from what you have here, we don't know the exact size in terms of like acreage and square feet. Uh, I did see acreage on the web. Six point eight four acres. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is a nice size. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well. And so the next month, you can report back about what they, what they think they want. Yeah, I think going to them with um, an idea of dollars that we could spend would be prudent. Um, okay. And, uh, and then again, looking at what you have in your budget uh, so, for this year, which we can. Did you say this the other day that you think we're going to have about forty-five thousand dollars? So we have one hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars of asset money that would be ample. It would be prudent to attempt to encumber and get underway by the end of this year. Okay. So seven, if you spent about seventy-five-ish on the the uh, bridge, bridge, 
and then you spent 45000 on these two parks, so this one, and then each, right? Each. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at the other one. So the other one um, does not have an approved design. I reached out to Steve today, and uh, I didn't hear back from him, but I, I know that they have been working with the community. Uh, so this is in, it's called the Fox Meadows, but this is Fox Hill, right? And it's to the west, so County it's, Road is here, yeah. and this is ninth. So they yeah. are. Yeah. 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 Now, it's sort of by it's sort of by uh, a little bit. It's a little bit south of uh, what is it, Jim? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's south of the one that has the mural there. The yeah. And the high school one, uh, Trail Ridge, right? right? One. Okay. Is that up there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So same same kind of thing being done in two phases. The community input and, and I mean construction and bidding is is absolutely underway. It's north of the uh, hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know that area. Yeah. Say. So okay. there's the these are the uh, projects coming out of what what we know what we know where Parks Department is and I have been now assured. Um, from multiple employees in the Parks Department that this isn't lip service like some of the other project Parks projects that we have been told that are going under construction and still have not, have not broken ground in years. This is this is happening and it is it's a coming from the tippy to the top. So I am assured that if we get an artist under contract, the artist is not going to be waiting around to install. Yeah. This is happening. So when looking at the queue of our public places projects, that's one of the reasons that the, um, the executive team has narrowed down these projects. Um, and then maybe before we go too much further, low hanging fruit, the vintage tra traffic boxes, um, working with the archives and we have a copious amount of, of fantastic uh, archival photographs that would work in vinyl wrapping on these boxes. Um, I'm doing the product research right now, but uh, talk about bang for your buck and maintenance fees. These are fantastic. So uh, depending upon uh, what dollars are left and what we're able to encumber uh, and who decides to be on the task force for doing the research of these, uh, we can decide how many we want to do. Um, and it would also address the credit, the feedback of desiring to have our public places all over town. We're addressing a lot in the south part of town right now. The city does not own a lot of land. Not that people know that, but um, doesn't own a lot of land up north. So that's one of the ways that we can address. There are these like downtown. There are these on every corner. Yeah, they're, they're at every intersection, yeah. right? It's the traffic control box. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, one of the things that we could just talk about is about having more kind of pocket bars. Not that this is exactly pocket size, but more kind of surprise things that you can spy around town. And it just makes our town so rich to have this. And this one is just so easy because we don't have to pay the artists. We have access to the photos already. It's just a photo, it's a viral wrap. You know, and they're easy to replace if they get damaged. Yeah. Right. And it'll definitely increase decrease the richness of the town and the downtown. So can it be taxed at all? Mm hmm Yeah, it's about it's a vinyl wrap. It can be taxed and QR code. Yeah, QR code. I don't know what, what it is. <laughs> yeah. They are really cool. Oh absolutely, like a label on the yeah. bottom or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then depending on how well the tour goes, then this yeah. could be one of the next things that we dive into. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't want to call the project slow hanging fruit, but it's it's true. Like this one is is a great one. Yeah. So yeah. here so here we are, so second half of the year and looking at um, responsibly of course putting these things forward. Um, it would be absolutely of course preferential to get the prep bridge started right away because of the 2013 pieces of it. We'll work with our comms team. I understand that they're doing quite a bit in September to let people know about commemoration of blood. Of course, the museum is going to have an 
participation in this room. So that we'll be able to tap into that and say, this is the contribution from our public places to the memory and the arts all is underway is a great way of doing that. So um, with that, does anybody have questions? I have a question. Yes. If we <coughs> allocate this money yes. this year, yes. and it turns out that it, what we want is going to be more expensive, can we add more money next year? Mm -hmm. That's a really question. So for everybody who wasn't at the Executive Committee meeting, what do you think? Do you like all these projects, plans, and ideas? Yeah. Can we move forward? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so <coughs> that question. So we want to, oh. we want to encumber someone. Yeah. I'm sure we'll put it out there. Yeah. Okay, what about Civic Center 2D? I'm talking about that. Well, let's do the money because that isn't money right now. It's not money. Okay. Or is it? Am I wrong? I don't know. We don't have to. I think money. we. Uh, I think uh, we should probably talk about okay. these three big projects, and then we can talk about the two little ones. All right. That's good. Okay. So this is three. All right. So, so we in the executive committee initially thought 75000 for this bridge. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? Does anybody, is everybody willing to? As long as we can adjust it up if necessary and feel comfortable with it, I think we might have some surprises in the company, yeah. especially with the three-week piece. Um, that if we, if we can if adjust we, it, we really want some kind of mixed media, it might be more than that. So the other thing you can do, of course, is you could create an RFQ with a range and you put the scope of work out that you were looking to address this with a strong project between X number and Y number. You put that RFQ out. You, of course, get your task force together. You still get a selection panel together. You get all of your qualifications. Those people go through, narrow it down to the artists who create proposals. Then, of course, we pay those artists to create proposals. They put the proposal together and they say, my proposal will cost X number of dollars and F or Z, and that would have to be between X and Z. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you can we always, pay them, we would pay always, them something for their work on this proposal. Always. Yes. You, have, you absolutely 100% do that. You add in this fiscal year, in 2023, you have 171 that we could encumber without having to reappropriate dollars. And Eric has assured me, and I'm sure Sean will agree, appropriating dollars is not a big deal. <laughs> so it just you have to go to council, and it's budget time. But we just it is budget time. <laughs> <laughs> just keeping that in mind. Which is not like Miller time, but <laughs> it's not. I don't know about after council. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of discussion and you know things that bring value to the community are the, the things that and this does bring value to the community this is such an important community aspect that people uh, can say yeah I, I you know it increases the value of my home it increases the the, the walkability and the, the view of the community and, and everything so you know other communities don't have this so we made sure this is a priority and that budget wise we can certainly uh, squeeze a few things in there. And this is fund balance that's already within our public places. Right. Fund. Correct. Sure. So we're not, yeah, yeah, not, not expanding. Not uh, you know, taking it from anywhere else. This is money that's already dedicated to our public places. Correct. Correct. And so um, just to put in perspective, we have 171,000, and these are asset dollars we're talking about. So we're not talking about operations dollars, we're talking about the line of purchasing up, okay? Um, so this year we have 171, and in the budget for next year is 250. So you can still appropriate the dollars of the way that they should be spent tonight, and then if the, the parks projects need to go over into 2024 fiscal year, then we just do 
Okay, so I'm, this is hard Back to the bri bridge. Back to the bridge. You, well, yeah. but the thing is, my, I, I don't do this well with my head. No, the the, um, the yeah. $45,000 or $50,000 piece for the parks. Mm -hmm. Do we need to do that in 23? No. Uh, I think to move, so to get this project started, um, an allocation of dollars would be most prudent so we can start the artist call recently. Okay. On the park, the two parks projects, having an idea of how much you as an art public places commission feel comfortable assigning to those projects. So when I go into these design meetings, I have a leg to stand on a bit, would be helpful. Well, I, I we, just think that if we say, oh, we have, I'm rounding this because these are $50,000 to spend on this park, mm -hmm. and all they want is three bike racks, that's a lot of money for a bike rack. They don't get to choose what the art is. Okay, good. That's, that's you, a good answer. You get to choose one of the arts. They're going to lend themselves to irrigation as planned here. This would be an appropriate place for our design. Things that we could envision are, you know, the community has said, we'd like to see here at Park and Public Places is your opportunity to ask the community what they would like to see. All of those things are going to come to light, but if I can go in and say, our Public Places Commission is considering or has all has allocated forty five thousand. If we need to go up from there based upon what the community wants to see, you know, if they want to see a Chicago Bean, I'm going to go. They want to see we need to bring it about it, you know. But but they can say we have this much square footage and we'd like to see something musical. But then I'll do the research and say musical things cost about this much money, come back to you and we can reach, you know, okay. move dollars. Around. So if we vote tonight to allocate 75, 45, and 45, that's just encumbering those funds, but they aren't written in stone. It's just allocating. Just Encum allocating. Encumbering is when we actually go under contract with an artist. So it's allocating this money, but it's not written in stone. Correct. And can we decide? Can we decide? Do we need to decide now if we're going to do an RFQ or if we're just going to do a call, just a straight call for artists? Is that the, is, are those the options? Your options for commissioning artwork are three ways according to your guidelines. One is best practice, which is an RFQ. That basically says we are looking for, it's like, a, it's like hiring someone for a job, just like any job. We are looking for these qualifications based upon the kind of artwork that we desire. And we would like anybody who's interested to send us an example of your previous work. And then it's narrowed down to an RFP. At that point, that's when you are asking a short list of people and the, the task force and the selection panel will decide what that short list looks like. And then those people are coming together and they're putting a proposal together. That's doing work. And so we pay the artists yeah. at that point yeah. in time to do the work, and then the artwork is selected on that. RFQ is the best practice for our public places. Your second option is just to go straight to an RFP, and that is not best practice because artists will come to you and they'll conceive out of their mind something for the space, and they're not getting paid for it. Yeah. Um, you could do that. In those instances, Often what you will get is artists who have already created a piece of artwork and it doesn't have to fit. Yeah. So they're like, hey, I'll give you a proposal. I have this thing in my storage, you know, put it in your park. Okay. Um, the other piece is the direct purchase, which you have done as well. An example of that is when Art on the Move happened and the bear came to town and it was downtown. And then Art um, on the Move left in 2018. And so the artist had to take the bear away and stuck it up in Lions. And then all the Longmont residents who went into Estes Park was like, there's my bear! Okay. Where's my bear? Why is my bear? So then they came back to our public places and they're like, look, our bear is in Lions. Like, when is our bear coming back? And then the commission decided, well, the community really likes our bear. We're going to purchase the bear. 
reached out to the artist, they gave us the price, and we purchased the mural. Okay. So those are the three ways in which our public places can purchase our mural. And do we need to determine that tonight? Yes. Okay. What do people think? So, um, I'm trying to put like six acres. Is that about two city blocks? That's a collection. I'm just trying to get an idea of how large that is. And I was thinking, well, probably a forty-five thousand dollar piece of property. Well, about one well, could be, you know, something that would have a lot of impact. It's probably appropriate for that space. These are random thoughts. Anyway, no, um, yeah, that makes sense. And um, so I, I like the idea of doing those amounts for two parts. And then um, I did have a question on when you put out the RFP or whatever you're going to put out. Mm -hmm. um, we leave it, you can leave it open to the artist to say, we're envisioning like something that has a part of it being 3D, but we're open to whatever. Because I mean, I'm just thinking about Mario coming in from you know left field yes. or something. But you don't know what people are gonna. Well, we give it. we give them we give them guidelines. Yes. We create a statement that says this needs to complement the bridge on Main. It commemorates our our flood, our flood. <laughs> it's, you know, this is the space we have. We really like something in mixed media. So we give them ideas. And then they say, they take those ideas and say, hey, here. Like the butterfly pavilion, you want a gathering place with shade. You got a pretty good building. And I do, I like the idea of giving them a range, a dollar range that might be beyond the 75000 yeah. To see what comes. If we if we say seventy five to eighty five, say eighty five thousand, does that limit the amount of money we can allocate to the parks? We just won't encumber the dollars for the parks until next fiscal year. Okay. Okay. Seventy five thousand. Yeah. So so our choices are RFQ direct purchase, which I think that we can eliminate as an option in this case, right? All right, so RFQ or the other thing which nobody gets paid for, so we don't like that. So RFQ, we're looking at RFQ. <laughs> and, and what it comes down to is ultimately you get artists who are going to apply for the RFQ and you are asking for mixed media of, of painting and some mosaic kind of work and you're gonna have a bronze sculptor apply with all the raw sculptures yes. and then the that's bear. the moment where you're going to have to say this isn't the kind of work we're doing or you get someone like mario which is a perfectly good uh, uh, example because he does work in mural he does work in in mosaic but he also is a sculptor right and so when he as a qualified applicant um, looks at it he'll say you know the sculpture i'm not going to include in my portfolio work of examples of the things that I do, but here are the things that I have done. With this type of project, it's big enough that this is not an entry level artist opportunity. It's gonna to have to be a fairly robust uh, qualification, but also there is the written piece of it of saying, you know, um, I've done these kinds of things and this image, um, it's been, let's say, Mostly glass, but I've also been working in ceramic too, and it'll show you know the breadth of the kinds of work that we do. Uh, this is the area we're talking about, so it kind of does this like, and that's what two, four, six, eight, ten, like twelve houses long. Mm -hmm. um, two, four, six, six or eight. Houses wide. It's a neighborhood park. It's not huge. It's probably about the size of one city block. Yeah, I think so. I was trying to think and I think our houses in one neighborhood are in a quarter acres. One house is a quarter acre. That's pretty good size. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a lot of yeah, anyway, 
yeah. 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 Did did that help you now science very particular size of this? Yeah. So I think a good uh, I'm trying to think of other neighborhood park pieces that we have. Call your park piece, right? Yeah. Is the big um, courthouse yeah. seal yeah. of the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. Uh, so how much there's Roosevelt Park has all the different pieces of yeah. that But that's not but that's not a neighborhood park, right? I mean, I'm just thinking for scale purposes of um new who that's in Thompson yeah. Park the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Thompson to Seattle. So that would be Lansing is it like the business of the land piece in Colorado. Yeah. The last Thomas has the piece that's in Colorado Park. 16? Yeah. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea. That would be something like that. Yeah. And don't forget about it. No, I'm, no, I'm not. I mean, the cost of the projects are coming back somewhere in the neighborhood of 16 to 18% higher than normal. Um, the. The. Uh, is the Zebo the circular one? Not what's great water, according to the contract. Yes, but then he went through the budget. Oh! And the Art and Public, he had to come back to the Art and Public Places Commission and have more some more dollars. Okay, now it's 2019. So, what would, what would it end up being? 55? In this day and age? Probably more like 70. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's probably a too large of a scale for a small. Yeah. Yeah. That's a little yeah. But uh, so when so if a task force does get together, the um, the next steps will be, of course, at Art Walk we will be uh, soliciting new selection panelists, finding out people's schedule and getting some of the selection panel dates on, and then I'll do a bunch of research of you know examples of things that you get for the dollar amount that you know, we're looking at in this day. Things that have been commissioned in other towns, but locally, you know, uh, yeah. But that's about a good sense piece. Um, okay, so we still have to make a motion to approve money for the bridge. Let's do the bridge first. We make a motion to allocate between seventy-five thousand. Between 75 and 100. And so the scope of work would say that's me. Got 75 to 100. Okay. And do I have a second? Awesome. All in favor of a scope of work seventy-five thousand to one hundred thousand for the Pratt Street Bridge for an RFQ. Yes. Very much. Okay. Now for Clover Meadows and Fox Meadow Park. These are neighborhood parks. Yep. Absolutely going to be made last next year. Yep. Last as year. I as I have been assured by multiple people in the parks program. Okay, so we have we have until you go to the meeting. Yeah. You have no idea what they're thinking about, correct? I mean yeah, I'm still the yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether they want fifteen bronze sculptures of swimming fish down the side of the park or whether they want uh, uh, yeah. Winnie the Pooh in a balloon. I think moreover what will come to light is this is the space that we feel uh, based on our community input and the designs that we're going with it's going to fit in these possible areas. Okay. All right. And, we're and you can table it till next month if you want to. Or I'm gonna spend mine. Yes. <laughs> you, can you, can always, you can always amend your allocation at another time. <laughs> I said let's switch shop and I want to spend the money. Okay. 
Yeah. All right, and how much money do you want to spend on each part? I want to make a motion to allocate forty-five thousand dollars in RFQ for each part, both meadows and parks. Okay, and th that forty-five thousand dollar allocation would that include the money we pay the artist to do the the? So that would be extra. Okay, because um, I don't want to limit them. Yeah. Okay, so who seconds that motion? Does anybody? All in favor? Technically, we should probably do um, one for Clover and one for Fox Blues. Okay, so that was Clover. And we're still all in connects. Thank you. And Melanie seconded? Yes. yes. Thank you. And then Fox Meadows? I make a motion to spend $45,000 on the RFQ for Fox Meadows and the And a second? Second. And yell. And a vote, please. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. I love only having five people. Okay. Traffic box final wraps. We don't have to allocate any money at this time because we could, they each cost $100 each. We can do a million of them. If they each cost a thousand dollars each we can do fewer than that yep and i'm just going to come back to you and let you know what it's looking like and uh, but it would be helpful if there are people who are interested in starting to work with as um, volunteers to come up with images or post them on okay so, i have one of our not this one <laughs> i would like to do that myself i know eric's like <laughs> Sorry, sir, you just signed up for something else. <laughs> I, I have, have some suggestions if yes. anyone would like to. Yes. I would like to know if the final rep people would, well, well obviously, <laughs> they'll do whatever they want, but I mean, are pictures that are long and thin, like the one on the end there, better? Or are pictures that are big and wide, like the guitar players there. A very good question. So I spoke with one manufacturer, and depending upon how much they cost per box, I may or may not have to go to bid. That said, they take the images and proof them on the actual boxes because Laura and I went down to the corner and measured that one. But then when I was driving and I was on 17th and Main, I know that that box was different. So they actually, we can take the number of images that we have, we allocate them to the different boxes and then they actually pull them and proof them and make sure that it fits properly on the box that they put them in. So it may be a crop of an image, but okay. it may not. Okay. So basically, we can just pull out any picture that we think is cool about the Israel one. Ooh, ooh, wow. It can be all over my mind, but I think the name so is so awesome. great. It's so great. So great. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. I, agree. I, think, I, I think, think that we, we personally, <laughs> because they're all historical photos, I would be surprised to see one in color. Of course, historical. I mean, I think years ago, I think it was a color, so. I think yeah. like 1970s color. So glorious. Yeah, oh, so all the red shot of it. We lived for this. Yeah, yeah. 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 But the 1970s is when the red shot of it. The 1970s photos are the best. Yes. Like oh, Rocco I mean, Lord. Say yes. cheaper Charlie than the night. All I can think is yes. the exactly. yes. colors yes. in cookbooks. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those were the best. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Legal would probably hide under fair use because it's not for commercial purposes, yeah. but we would probably want to. That brings up the question of these guys are probably dead, but maybe somebody from the 70s isn't. It's actually not about the people in the photo, it's about who took the photo. Okay. Yeah, um, it's an intellectual property. Well, I was far more brown and I saw my picture on the side of the street and I'm like being a little upset. Well, so do you think that when you were younger? So, no, yes. Think about it. That's true. It's I was young. Yeah. 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 So, do we have task force folks interested? Do you know them? Yeah. <laughs> I'll make time. I'll figure this out. Because I got nothing time. Okay. Then again, I think we can also spread this out to digital research. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I mean, that'll make my life a lot easier. easier for sure. The question is going to be which ones to throw to not include, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think everybody's gonna whoever's in the task force is gonna have to pick their favorites kind of thing, so, and then yes. everybody kind of just comes in and brings them to Jen to vote on or something like that. So yeah. I think that'd be fun too, because then it adds that aspect that everybody else kind of gets to put their two cents in two and yeah. well, they test they they But who's gonna go through? Like it adds like a lot of pictures, five thousand pictures to go through. Not all, and not everybody has the time, so. Well, and the task force certainly figuring out, are you going to try and get some, like, throughout time, or are you going to stick with, like, uh, oh, you will have to, lots of time. Yeah. Like, we'll get, we'll so many great ideas. But yeah. the Art on the Move, I can agree, like, a, um, an opportunity, like, Art on the Move style, where everybody gets to vote on which ones make the short piece for cool. at least the beginning. Totally. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Even if you open it up to just, like, so, a mission order, the, like, even the museum, you know? Yeah. But so what we need is a count of the boxes that we're willing to wrap. Yeah, as so I'm working with the traffic folks right now, they have of course concerns of overheating and working with the manufacturer of the two kinds of products, one's brand and one's something else. And I've already been in communication with three other towns that do this and they're like, it's awesome, I'm like I'm with you. So just making sure that everybody's on the same page. But obviously the traffic people have to be they have to sign up. Yes, they own the boxes. Yeah. Um, okay. And okay. what's their initials? Is it just traffic? Um, Jimmy, staff, and Carlos. No, I mean like LPC. No, they're just, just traffic. They're just traffic. Okay. okay. Or, they're yeah. part of public works. Okay. Cool. EWN on. Oh, yeah, there it is. Public work and natural resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Or maybe they change it. Mm -hmm. All right. And then lastly, um, oh, Civic Center 2D. So, um, one of the other conversations that came out of the executive team is that we do have a lot of buildings, the Memorial Building certainly being one of them, that they have walls um, with nothing on them. And so, depending upon what ends up kind of end of the year of this budget, putting out a call, this would be an RFP kind of situation, no, this would be a direct purchase kind of situation where we put a call out to Longmont artists or whatever you all think of um, opportunities for people to submit like six or eight pieces of artwork that they have to go on display, permit to be purchased by our public places to go on display in civic buildings. Paintings, photographs, wall yeah. sculpture, anything that could hang on wall. And it has to be, uh, can't just be a slide, it has to be an actual physical thing with the frame or not as necessary. Right, you need to go. Okay. And so where we need to start with this is an off, well first we need to ask Jeff Reisner if he's okay. Who's my big, big, he's our big, big, big boss. Um, and then we'll have to go around and do an audit of potential spaces, figure out size, limitations of what we have invite staff of those buildings to be included in the conversation and then put a request out for artists and collect them and then do the same kind of thing on the art on move you know you all get to see these things they're about this size this would fit here this would fit there and then just narrow it down and purchase artwork so in end of the year probably situation so um allocating dollars we're just not there yet based on yeah and things. also we have to decide if we pay by size or by medium or by what. They say they say it's, this is my painting. I sell my painting for eighteen hundred dollars. Okay. 
market value. Cool. So if Ready you are first. interested, I will reach out to Jeff Reisner and ask about this. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's all the direction I needed. Um, and then next month we'll get task forces for the parks. Probably. We do need a task force for the bridge. Yeah. I want to be on all the task force, but yeah. I can't. I'm not insane <laughs> to do that. It's so, it can't be. Well, but they are all part of this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Therese is in. And Melody. And Melody would like to. Melody on the bridge? Sweet. So the other bridge. <laughs> on the bridge. All right, ladies. <laughs> I will be reaching out to you for your um, availability. I'll take one of the parks. Do you want to do task forces for parks now? That's fine with me. Yeah. I mean, you can. I'm just. I obviously, we have some people around here tonight, but this is where I need to go. Assign the word. <laughs> it all hurts my question to be like the house of Thanksgiving. If you're not there, you get assigned all the bad things. <laughs> all right, say Teresa and Melanie for Pratt, uh, Clover Meadows Park. For do you want to assign task force members for parks? Do we, can we do that next month? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. 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 I can go have more information. And even yeah. if you're not on these task forces, the ones where we have selection panels, there's still other ways to be involved. Because we yeah. have other tasks. As you all know, as you may know, we have other tasks. So but the task, task, force, task force members sit on the selection panel. Yeah. yeah. There's other things to do. But yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Did we did we get those? Oh, oops. Did you? Oh, shoot. Yeah. We'll do it under new business. How are we on time? Okay. Cool. We're good. We're good at Okay. All right. So this is still new business. So VI. Phone booths. Yeah. Um, this is more as an FYI. Yeah, this is it. But what used to be Quest, which is now no longer anything, um, they have phone booths. Old ones. Some of them have phones, but I think two of them don't. Anyway, there's three of them in town. Yeah. One of them is installed on across from Ziggy's, right. um, that's and that's side. in the right of way. Two of them are on um, in private business land, and they need to go away. And so the LDDA was contacted, and they're like, what do we do? We figured out the legally legally of it. They called me and they're like, hey, Angela, does our couple of places want some old phone booths? And so I was like, I don't know. So I asked the executive team and the answer was, heck yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, so here's, so what we'll have to do is we'll have to pay to get them removed, which I think means me and Jared and Lara with the Sawzall. Yeah. And like, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> and then we have to store them, which we have our shed. We also have. We'll figure. I, I'm not worried. They're not, not. They're not. They're not like Doctor Who phone booths. Like, yeah. They're they're like, like, they have there's one. Like, yeah, there's there. one on the wall by like, Winchell's. Yeah. And if you drive by on Main Street, you can see it there. It's if I had my thing. We it's got. It. It's like 1980s. Phone. It's got a. It's got a it's post. And it's got a little three sided wrap yeah. around. It's like kind of plastic with, like, you know. Metal. Yeah. Yeah. We need those. Oh, Witchels. I mean, we totally need yeah. yeah. So, one of the ones at Witchels, one's at the old gas station across from the pump house. So, those are the two we have to get. If we want them, we have to get them and we have to store them. And then the third one just stays, it can just stay in the right of way until we figure out what what kind of our project to do with them. And the only thing that the Quest Not Quest lady said was they can't say Quest Not anymore. I was like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, they were agreeable and I just need your direction on who oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want to take pictures and put them on Instagram. Yeah. So yeah. so as you're doing your musings on your, you know, hyper allergic or your board pandas and whatever, like this it could be anything. Like it could I, I, I have like, I guess they're small. I, I just, they're, they're not big maps no. of it. 
Yeah, they can you put it up on the screen? Can I? Yeah. So yeah. did you look at the rules? I mean, everybody knows what we're talking about, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't know, I haven't seen a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? What are you doing? Let's go down more. But there you go. I'm sending it for right now. So, so I want to go to the Sego map, which is directly across the street. Yeah, yeah. Like straight from the Puff House. Right. I want to go to the Puff House. Like, there it is. It is. But what are we going to go Your phone booth that you are not paying in right there. Right there. Right there. I mean, you know, it's a so great. Yeah, there's a piece of history. It's a piece of history. That was the piece of history. So, yeah. So, anywho, um, you know, I went to Meow Wolf. I don't know if you guys all did the whole their phone booth thing. It was okay. But I think there's lots of opportunity. So yeah. Anyway, but it does mean that we so, will have to store them. I we're not gonna pay to store them. So get, 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 get the saws all. We we all agree that you need to get those okay. yes. before, before somebody else snaps them off. What, 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 <laughs> what if you actually hooked them up and had them like in different places around the museum outside, where somebody could pick it up and they could hear some famous uh, somebody from Longmont tell us quick. Quick story. Yeah, that's oh, a good idea. That would be great, but I don't think they have phones. Yeah. That look. Or they could move, like we could install them in like a couple of parks and then next season pick them up and take them to a couple of other yeah. parks. Yes. I mean, yes. 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 It could yeah. be a cool way to start like a walkie talkie or something. Yeah, like get smart. Like get smart. So, I mean, so anyway, point one is like, how hard are they to get up? Like, what do they weigh? Obviously, at some point, I'm gonna have to talk to a structural engineer's management of like, when we put them back in, like, what did, how did they have to be bolted, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I'll do the, I'll do that legwork stuff while you make dreams. <laughs> <laughs> but this is definitely a 2024, like the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This uh, is just, just we need to get, get, get them up. and keep them. Yeah, it's not. so. But clearly we're doing yeah. the other day because they're yeah. like, oh, it's just stuff we have here. So there's, okay, phone okay. booths. So yeah. phone booths, there you go. Okay, and now, Art Walk. At Art Walk on September 19th. No, it's on the 10th. On the 9th. On the 9th. Is the 9th. I can't read that right. Oh, on the 9th. So, um, this is an email that you should have received. Yeah, you can it. will receive <laughs> it. <laughs> that has um, a lot of gobbledygook about how easy it is, except that it's got so much language, you're like, dear, please. But ultimately it says, here's what you do. Three easy steps. And you just click on the link. Click the link. Oh, oh, oh. And what are you doing at our work? We are going to have a booth with the museum. Are we doing a it's little project? Like right now. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, I think we're going to make buttons. Oh, I love making buttons. Do what now? Go to the email. I'm bored you the email. No. That's just the same thing. There you go. There we go. Uh, and then it populates the sign up, and that's when you get to see. Um, that we have, are asking for one person to come and help set up, one person to be an ambassador from four to six, one person to be an ambassador from six to eight, and one person to tear down from eight to nine. Okay, so on our agenda it says the 19th. I know it's the 16th. It's the 9th. It is the 9th. Yeah. I know it's the 16th. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. So. It's the 9th. And then Rhythm on Roosevelt is the next Saturday right. on the 16th, and the Creative District and LDDA, along with ourselves and another a, a bunch of uh, cultural brokers and creatives in town, are then <coughs> pitching that whole week as Longmont's first Arts Week. And so then there's a culmination of the existing events that are already happening in town on a consolidated. Um, calendar so you can go and see um, all of the different opportunities. So what we're asking from you uh, is to join. There's going to be museum staff there. Laura and I will be dividing and conquering and to go and sign up and we'll have our shop art box winners 
on display. Yeah, they can send to a set of three boxes. They're gonna say yes. They're so. And then we will have button making, and then of course just a lot of information about what it is we do in the applications for selection. So, and talking about these projects. And that is that at the, the art block or is that at the art block? Okay. okay. It will right. be on May, May close of May down from like okay. third to ninth. And then Rhythm on Roosevelt, please come. But as a, a volunteer on behalf of Art and Public Places, there will be a museum booth. Um, there will be a facilitated craft something happening, and we will have our information out, but we don't need to staff that. That's the weekend away. Yeah. And then the weekend after is that, because if you one, two Saturdays, why not do three? <laughs> The twenty foot the Saturday after that is the twenty third, which is the plan by numbers at Kensington Park. And that's so we will be there and you don't need to volunteer, but it would be great if you showed up and you will get information about that. So every Saturday in September, let's get together. Okay. All right. So when you go to and you follow the link, the one thing you're gonna see on the side is it's gonna populate and steal all your cookies and obviously scour what you've been Googling and will be since. Um, and try and sell you those shoes you've been looking at. Um, that's the one terrible thing about this app, but it makes it really, really easy for you to just go ahead and sign up. Um, and then it's gonna send you a confirmation, and you're gonna put your Laura, name. send me that email so I can sign right now. that person is. And phone <laughs> number. <laughs> And then after you go through the whole thing, it's gonna say, hey, thanks so much. Oh, and then it's gonna try and sell you more stuff. <laughs> but, um, and then I, luckily, Lara and I just get to auto populate your reminders and it, it does the work for us. So um, it's not, but, but yeah, I think it was, I mean, I did I did art walk with a different community yes, last year. Community and then the button making is a huge hit. So um, hopefully it won't be like cold and rainy again. But I guess it was freezing. Can I ask you about the button making? Do you have people yeah. 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 draw something? Yeah. 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 So it'll be drawing on paper or what? That's right. I was flying by it. It's just because yeah. school company design. Yeah. One year for a convention I was doing, I used a button to make little characters. You can do that too, yeah. The only rule on the button making is that the staff has to do the yeah. thing. Because we need to So again, sign up. The reason to show you this is sign up is really easy. And I'm not trying to sell you the shoes you were looking at. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Um, and at that, social hour. Let's, before we get into that, since Sean is here, we're show. Well, I, he's trying I, to run away. Yeah, sorry for being late. I, no, okay. like I, said. Uh, I want to thank you all for uh, the nice card I recently received uh, with my father's passing. Uh, thank you again. It's very appreciated. Uh, and then uh, just generally, again, reiterating the issue around uh, budget time. You got some things that you want to, to have put in the budget from your perspective as a member of this uh, committee. That's the that's the and you know a strategy of how, how why it's important and you know why we should implement in this year's budget. Uh, just send an email to me on there and uh, uh, then uh, we can make sure that I can carry that forward. Uh, I don't have anything because we kind of took that some time off here, so uh, just interesting to see some of these things. Good to see you all again. Thank you for coming to the dedication. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. No, that was great. That one was great. Just a bummer that it had rain that that, that that's, yes, right. that's the only thing, you know, it's like, and then it cleared up and it was all good. So. <laughs> that's a Angela and Murphy's law project. <laughs> Last one. Awesome, thank you. And oh, if there are projects that you hear of in 
from the city perspective that don't end up on some of these lists where they want to see our public places? I mean, you might hear about it. Yeah, if I, I, mean, I, yeah, if I hear about it ahead of time, I certainly, I'm pretty good about it. If I think it's like, it doesn't really seem like it's, you know, uh, that uh, I should be trying to, you know, make that decision. I, I'm generally going to be pretty good about passing it on to the right people, not have people that uh, come up with ideas and then they'll send it to me. It's like going, that's not really my, I, I have to kind of pass it through staff to see, first off, we have a limited amount of time and, uh, and resources and staff we want to be respectful of that because you know these are kind of difficult times because uh, it's hard to find uh, highly qualified people and uh, and people that are willing to make that uh, commitment so you know, we gotta not uh, uh, push people too hard uh, I think that we're still at that place where maybe, maybe two years from now we can kind of go oh no everybody can <laughs> but now is, is not the time. Thank you. Well, the fire departments are certainly on the list. Workman Park, if it ever gets under construction, we'll revisit that just as a FYI. And it feels like there's something else that I'm forgetting. Oh, the union silos. You know, may or may not. But maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much. Oh, yeah, social time. Okay. So, um, I thought it was fun. I mean, one of the things that we discussed in our executive committee meeting is that it, we really like spending time together. We have a great time here, of course, on the commission. But it, it takes us a long time to get to know each other because sometimes it's like years before we're sitting with this other person we can really visit. So, that's in, the, in this kind of just so that we can get to know each other a little bit better, faster. I propose that we do this questionnaire, which I started to work on mine. So if you could just do them now, uh, it will just take a second, really. And if you, if you don't think of, uh, you want to keep it, you can always submit the answer to the later too. But then somebody will compile them, one of our staff, right? Yep, one of our staff. And then you can look and see. So I might, but I might go to, just visit with each other and I thought we'd just pass them around and then we could guess what they want. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put your, your name. Yeah, put your name on it. Then you can't pass it. But yeah. I, will, I will start while you all are doing so that you can get to know me a little bit more. So I was born in Dallas, Texas, it's true. And I have lived in Longmont since 2016, which is seven years. And I came to Colorado in 2014 and moved to Durango first and was in Durango for a couple of years before I figured out that was not the place. So um, what kind of work did I do? Um, I actually was in marketing and in nonprofit administration and I have kind of a checkered career doing a lot of different kinds of things. Currently I'm a fiber artist and creativity teacher. Um, my creative work that I do right now is mostly Fiber art, yarn dyeing, I also do some sewing and some designing, um, and an occasional bit of other stuff, but mostly I'm so busy dyeing yarn and um, doing that kind of stuff, but that's most of my creative work right now. The reason that, you know, when the city council asked me in that interview about why did I want to serve on the AIP commission, I said, well, I really like living in Longmont. I want to see what goes on behind the scenes. And of all the commissions I looked at, this one looked like the most fun and fit for best with all my skills and experience. And I did work in public art in Austin. I didn't tell that it was in the 80s that I did this. <laughs> but I hate it. <laughs> but at least, you know, I did work in public art um, and I was very involved in the very nascent arts community in Austin that time because all the artists at that time were like all in their 20s and 30s. And they were all trying to figure out how to work with bureaucracy and developers and rich people and get donors and it was just like it was like babes wandering around and things, but it was pretty fun because it was a good place to start. One random fact about myself, I don't know, what should I say? Ask me some. <laughs> <laughs> How's your new studio? Oh my new studio is fabulous. It's in 15th and Main. It's right behind the Pizza Hut and it um, 
is really great. I'm getting used to it, and uh, I never see anybody else except for the Pizza Hut drivers who are outside my windows uh, in the afternoons. They're all vaping and talking on their phones, and then they go get pizzas and drive, and then they come back. That's it. They don't really see me because my windows are all filled with that COVID stuff, so I just have to spy on the drive. It doesn't smell like pizza, that's good news. And um, I'm getting used to it, definitely I'm getting used to it, because I have to go to work. <laughs> I have to get all my stuff organized and drive there, rather than just go to the basement and sit there all day. So, that's it. Okay. So, I think what we decided in an executive team meeting is, while we don't have time to go around the room and like, Give right. everybody three minutes. We'll try and do an icebreaker every time. Just something fun. Uh, so I don't know if you want to pick one of these things, like just the random thing about yourself and go around the room. And then um, we're really going to promote trying to have people come, if you can, a half an hour before the meeting. So there is that opportunity to have social time if we absolutely can. Um, but we'll try and do an icebreaker every time so you can learn about food in my childhood that I hated or you know I mean those kinds of yeah. things I get get everybody in so uh, Laura you want to say something that is a random factoid of yourself yeah I about food um, okay. yeah go for it if you never if you have never tried it and you like mustard put mustard in your mac and cheese it is delicious <laughs> <laughs> it sounds weird but it's so good <laughs> and I was like it was <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dijon would work too, but you can, yeah, I just, uh, that's a weird that's thing that I, that's, that's pretty good. good. Yeah, all right. So, uh, I, I am absolutely 100% sure that I am fifth generation Colorado born. It might be seven. Wow. So, in my free time, <laughs> I'm going to look into it further. But my great grandmother was born in Leadville in 1903. She's and the brothers of my great grandmother, there was a ag farm on Flagler, and and the mining was of course in Leadville. And every two years, the families would go back and forth because Leadville sucked. So, <laughs> so yeah, been here a long time. Never leaving. Yeah. <laughs> never. Well, it's good that you have been here so long because it's kind of hard to lose people somewhere else. Right. <laughs> yeah. hard to is well, um, yeah, I think so. I mean, people ask me, oh my god, how can you live there? It's so expensive. I go, everywhere you want to live. It's so expensive. expensive. It's where you're at. Oh, it's I right. don't care to live in North Van, no thank you. Or I don't want to get Love it. No thank you. No thank you. Cindy Factoid? Oh gosh, there's so many factoids about me. I can't even imagine. I, I, you have to ask me a question because I just. What about, what about a creative or uh, art related? There you go. Oh, art related. I make lace. Whoa. I make lace. That's what I do. Denver Art. Yeah, I make, and I've uh, been consulting with the Denver Art Museum on their lace collection. Oh, that's wow. so cool. <laughs> and I'm having a class on the 22nd. You said lace? Lace. 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 There's lots of kinds of lace. Yeah. I'm going to do this class. Lace. It's pretty mesmerizing to watch. I, you know, I've watched plenty of videos of yeah. all this. Like, that's why I'm like, I'm very intrigued. <laughs> I didn't know this. Well, good thing we're on a uh, task force together. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Your first spot is. <laughs> all right, Melody, well, back to it. I, I collect hobbies, so I have lots of hobbies. <laughs> I have to stop collecting hobbies. Um, I don't know what to do for You just have to find the one. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Are we talking about the same dog game? Oh, okay. That's a good random factor. I really love to travel. My boyfriend and I love to travel and um, go surfing and all sorts of uh, fun trips. Uh, like. Six years ago, we went to Ecuador um, for a surf trip, and we were hanging out for a couple weeks. And this dog kept following us around, um, and that's my Rihanna. So I brought my, we brought her back, and um, yeah, uh, meat product. Ecuadorian, bring it into the country. Really? Yep. <laughs> when you slay it, you 
just claim it as a new drug. Oh. <laughs> Gross. It is no joke. No, seriously. Yep. And then the custom office was just, what are you bringing? You're like, no. It's <laughs> 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 no joke. Cool. All right, then. Uh, yeah. I don't know what to say because I, I pull out hobbies too and creative stuff. I'm always doing something and judging all over the place. So, um, but most recently, I discovered the spice sumac. That led me to buying a Persian cookbook, and now I'm like, all I want to do is cook food out of that cookbook and have anything that I can put sumac in. Oh, that's so nice. Nice. It's wonderful. <laughs> I tried to find sumac for a recipe when we were living in Durango. I think that was one of the things that did not find it. It's at Safeway of all places. I went like, I went all these different places where I thought I would find it. No, Safeway. Okay, good. John, you're up. Okay, so, uh, straight fact about me, I got struck by lightning in college in Durango. Uh, and, uh, and so now I can't tune in any radio, so that's not quite very, uh, that's not very creative. But uh, I'll walk away and it's out of tune, and I'll walk up and say, just sort of this sort of thing. <laughs> and sort of thing. Uh, it was just a thin, uh, you know, hit the water tower on the college campus, and uh, didn't even know that that happened. But on the creative side, I started my fourth career. You love this. My daughter Molly is uh, doing her, uh, she's graduating from college in Metropolitan State with media communications, and she's uh, starting her directing debut. And uh, I played the crotchety old professor uh, in her uh, uh, murder mystery that uh, she wrote and uh, directed and everything. Uh, and I played uh, uh, the the amateur actor playing in this uh, uh, with these uh, very skilled uh, actresses. Uh, a couple, one's been in uh, uh, the uh, Spider-Man movie, one's been in uh, a couple of Amazon movies, and one's been in a, in a Netflix movie, and then there's me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, that sort of thing. And so, uh, you know, I, I see that as my fourth act. Uh, uh -huh. I was a banker. And then I became a teacher, and then I got into the city politics, and now I'm doing that. So there I am. So I figured I could typecast it away. <laughs> I had very, very few lines. I could even tell them you were. <laughs> but uh, it was interesting. We went up to CSU, and when I got uh, in, in the uh, was it, uh, uh, lecture halls, uh, I was they filmed it in there with a, a class that uh, was uh, doing something there at the school and, and uh, then these actresses are there and they're like, oh, well, you know. So it was interesting. So that's my dream. Oh, so, yeah, and when it comes out, she's supposed to be putting it into a couple of uh, like uh, uh, festivals, uh, one in Toronto and the one in uh, New York and the uh, one in, in LA. So. And one of the Lama Museum. And where, uh, yeah, so it's called the Lama. So Oh. Right, Eric. Um, so I sing a crazy early American a cappella music called Shape Note or oh. Sacred Heart Music. Um, and I've traveled as far as England to do it, uh, as well as the South and California. Uh, all of it. It's it's. It's funny, you either really like it, or you people will come and, and they will sit with us and you can see them and they're like, this is what I'm going to talk, how do I say it? <laughs> <laughs> how many people do you have to sing with, or is there, is there a specific number? Or uh, specific number? Four part, um, the most I've ever had in a room, some with, is probably 150. And because we sing full volume, it's it's intense. Your ears sometimes ring afterwards. Cool. Uh, uh, well, I work on comics, but I cannot drive a station car no matter what. So there's my fun fact. I don't know what my fun fact is. <laughs> <laughs> 
I again like back to like yeah, a million hobbies, but I do make uh, recycled earrings out of can- tin cans that they sell at the Beachback and Bells for Boys. So I don't know. That's kind of one of my fun random things. Cool. You're participating, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. Or if you don't, you don't have to. Go for it. Where were you born? <laughs> Where were you born? I was born in London, England. And I've been over here for, I think, longer than any of you have been born. But you need tears. Are we frozen? Almost. Okay. Um, so, a note, Angela's going to be out in October? Yes, please. I'd like to excuse. Well, we'll see. see. Commissioner comments? I think we've already got them. Eh? I need a motion to adjourn. Unless anybody else has a comment. Does somebody have a comment they want to make? Okay, I need a motion to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Adjourned at 801.